plane. That's a certified airport in the middle of nowhere. Should I call our guy? <clears throat> yes, sir. Hey, Dan. Just yes. pulled into the airport. Dude, what park? Where's the tap? There she oh, is. Oh, dude, there's a tap. There's the sky flat. I feel welcome already. This is. I feel like I'm home. What's up? Where are we? We're at a, uh, what do they call it? Disclosed location. Undisclosed. Undisclosed location. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. We're at secret test ground doing yeah. this guy. Thing. Howdy and welcome back to another video. In lieu of the recent events surrounding the SkyTap Angel Frame, um, and as promised, we have found and gotten in touch with some lovely fine gentlemen who fly the SkyTap Angel Frame and are willing to allow us to fly their frames. So, Tucker and I drove about two and a half hours out to the blah, blah, airport in blah 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 Pennsylvania. Uh, it was requested that we keep that secret. And uh, we're gonna give a SkyTap Angel that is set up correctly an honest review and tell you what I like, what I don't like about it, and give you an overall like impression, first impression review video thing. What's kind of awkward is Tucker and I are making like basically the same exact video. Um, but we are not going to share or disclose our opinions to each other until we've both flown it and then kind of do like a hey I like this hey I didn't like this, but we don't want to give any each other any like kind of preconceived notions about anything once we fly it so um, Yeah, check it out or like in rural Pennsylvania Right, so behind me right there is the SkyTap Angel frame. It is a frame based on the popular um, flat top, but it's made by Andy Fuller, um, and it's got a round top, and it's not flat. One of the biggest features of the paramotor, one of the biggest focuses is safety. So there's so many things built into the frame um, directly for safety. So it's got those bars that stick out in front of you. Um, that's like face plant protection, so you can't like slam your face into the ground. Obviously the frame is super strong, the net is super taut and really stiff, it'd be really hard to get anything to go through the frame. It's also got the famous crumple zone which could potentially save you from breaking your back in the event of a straight down impact. Um, and a few other features that I think are actually pretty cool and really thoughtful. Unlike most paramotors that I normally fly, it doesn't have um, articulating swing arms. It's a fixed swing arm system, which is something new for me. Tucker's in the video now. Hello. What do you think? I think thoughts. It's blue. <laughs> um, this is a blue one. I flew a red one, so you know it's probably gonna be a little slower because you know red's the fastest color. But if you check this out, like it's almost like a like a tennis like a tennis racket in terms of like stiffness. It's got this quick connect harness thingy. It goes like this. See, then it velcros and then clips. So you'd have a lot of trouble to actually fall out, but that is cool. In the event of a water landing, you can just grip it and rip it and get right out. This is by far like the most durable paramotor I've ever seen. Compared to my Scout where the whole hoop is made out of carbon fiber and a little bit of aluminum, this thing is super solid. Like I would have no problem like banging this around and slamming it into something. One thing I'm a little curious about though is the starter is on the side. I had a lot of trouble with that last time. I don't know how starting this is gonna be or if I can even do it, but we'll give it a shot. Throttle's another real interesting thing on this paramotor. Um, it's, it's different than I'm used to. You're using the two front fingers instead of the two bottom ones, and it's got a safety thing so you can't accidentally fall and run up to full power, which is, which is nice. Um, it might be a little bit more tricky to hold in flight though, so we'll see. Um, so overall, this is really just kind of a completely different style of paramotor frame that I'm not used to. And uh, I'm willing to take a look at and see if it's something that I like. And um, yeah, so we're gonna get it up in the air. Who's going first? Can we rock, paper, scissor? Uh, winner goes first? Yeah. Rock, paper, scissor, shoot. So Tucker, you just hang tested it. How are you feeling? Um, got the hang point dialed, so that's good. How was the in and out of the seat maneuver? Um, not bad. I just feel like standing upright, I want the leg straps longer so that I can actually like not get crunched top to bottom. Yeah, for sure. Getting in. Where are you going? One. Oh yeah, you're gonna go to one. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're definitely too far back. Yeah, you don't need to take pictures of it. Well, this is convenient. Yeah. Just change your hang point right there. But uh, don't forget that critical. And Tucker, you've seen that with this, that critical, because uh, Judson stopped. Uh, out here, he stopped like about like right Before there. Before the oh, detent. And, then, and he didn't click it in. There's sure. a detent. Okay, yeah. so. You don't want to <laughs> slip out of that. Goof no, that. Tape and stuff slips out. out. It stayed going in the sat. I had to, I blipped it a little bit, but it didn't conk out. What's the first impression? Oh, my balls feel much better now. <laughs> <laughs> That's your first impression. Um, the weight shift is legit. I discovered if you're just trying to throw your body, it's whatever, but if you pull or push, you can like really throw it hard oh, with yeah. weight shift. The torque is definitely pronounced. Like doing a slalom turn, it wants to go right much more than it wants to go left. Um, comfortable, up in the air. Yep. How was um, launch? Your launch looked good. Launch wasn't bad. It, it's a little bit hard to start running, but as soon as I got the speed, I went into a foot drag and it felt normal. Yeah. All right, strapping into the SkyTap Angel. Check this out. So this goes through here. This goes into, why is this so tight? That goes in there, this hooks that, that clips down like that. This Velcro is on here, and this goes like that. Oh, here we go, we're gonna stand up. <laughs> oh, yep, that grabs in the knot region. So definitely this one sits higher on my back than the one I flew previously, so we'll just get that out of the way right now. All right, so I'll clip in first, and then somebody can start me up. Okay, so flipping that, so this goes here, here, like that. So, I'll clip this in. All right, buddy, you want to start me up? All right, clear. Ready to rip. Break. Clear. A. <laughs> Help. Tucker, why are you so good? Yeah. Okay. They're gonna refluff my wing. There we go. Into the foot drag. We'll get in the seat. Oh, that wasn't even that bad. Well, it's pretty goofy. Okay. Okay, once you're in the air, it isn't that bad. But that was really painful on the launch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out here to the south or to the north. I'm sorry. And apply uh, full power. So it's torquing. About that far at full power, I'm not touching the brakes. That's full power torque, but you can easily compensate for it with weight shift. Let's feel out the weight shift, okay? So I'm gonna weight shift to the right. And yeah, dude, that is better than most. I mean, that's keeping the wingtip below the horizon. My scout can't do that, and we'll exit. That was real legit, honestly. Pretty impressive. Left weight shift, and you can see that comes right over. Hey, I'm doing wing overs. It's a left full power turn. 
Alright, so in terms of torque, you turn to the left, it feels like magnets repelling. Whereas when you turn to the right, it feels like magnets attracting. Like you're holding outside brake to keep the wing where you want it on the right turn, but on the left turn, you're like actively fighting against it. Let's see if we can get some slalomy turns going. Shift is super legit. <laughs> hey, it does the thing. All right, let's get some on power wing overs going. It's very cozy, it's like a lounge chair, it's so wide. All right, I'm coming off the power, check this out. Most frames don't fly completely straight off power, this one does. Not bad at all. Let's do a foot drag. That wasn't bad getting back into the seat. Say this is plenty of altitude. I know for a fact I'm not gonna be able to restart this, so we'll just stow the throttle across my lap. I feel nice and secure. All right, Tucker's wing. Let's see you sat. It's not bad at all. In fact, I'm like above the wing a little bit. Almost boofed a swoop, dude. In the air? Not bad. Torque? Annoying? Yeah, it wasn't. the the. So my problem is on the ground, it's like super hard for me. But in the air, it's not bad. It's pretty comfortable. The weight shift's great. All right, flying the Scout back to back with the Sky Tap. First two things I notice is number one, for some reason the wing feels way more responsive on this frame. I don't know if it's just something I'm used to, but the roll rate and everything just feels way more locked. And I feel way more like secure and cozy in this frame. Whereas the sky tap is more of like this open seat kind of like up in the air feel. This feels like I'm attached firmly to everything. The weight shift. Okay, dude, what the f that's my climb rate. The climb rate is like double on this frame for some reason. Not sure why that is. 
All right, here's the weight shift on the scout. All right, I am hands off the pulley. You can see it's a little less. It doesn't keep the wingtip to the horizon, but for some reason through maneuvers, it felt way more locked and loaded on the scout. Whatever. Hey guys, so it's been a little while since flying the Skytap Angel and I wanted to give myself some time to form some actual concluding thoughts before I just release the video. So yeah, we're actually out here in Twin Falls, Idaho. So after flying the Skytap Angel, what can I say? Well, first of all, um, thank you to the people out in Pennsylvania. All those guys were super generous and thank you to thank you for allowing us to use your motor and fly at your lovely airstrip. It was amazing. Second of all, thank you to Andy Fuller for getting us in touch with them um, so that we could do this review in a very expedited manner. So obviously the first time I flew the paramotor, it was not set up correctly and that's my fault. But the second time I flew it, I honestly didn't feel like it felt that much different on the ground. It was definitely a little bit higher, but it was certainly lower than any other motor I've flown. Um, and I wish I could get the motor way up higher on my back. Launching again was um, pretty challenging. The on the ground handling, in my opinion, is not the best by a long shot. It is kind of painful and it's very hard to maneuver. I find that other frames of similar weights do this a lot better. Speaking of weight, uh, this frame weighs about the same as my Scout, but the weight is lower on your back and further down, which makes it feel a lot heavier than it actually is. And I struggled with that, and you can hear me kind of like breathing a lot. So the launch itself was not super hard, but it was definitely harder than other things I've flown. But once I got the wing up and overhead, it was pretty simple, straightforward, smooth to full power, get right off the ground. Um, once I was in the air, getting into the seat was pretty easy on this one, and I think that's because the harness was adjusted correctly. And then once you're in the seat, it's fairly comfortable. There's nothing really of note there. It was a pretty normal feeling seat. Immediately, one thing I did notice in the air was the torque. Um, this frame doesn't have any torque compensation, so if you just go to full power in level flight, the wingtip on the free ride came all the way down to the horizon, just like way down there. And like I said in the video, it felt like magnets repelling uh, to the left and magnets attracting to the right. So the torque was something that I wasn't used to and it was something that you would have to compensate for a lot of the time while you're flying this paramotor. I think that if you added lamelles to it aerodynamically, you could compensate for a little bit of it and get it more towards something like uh, most other paramotors. One thing I found really awesome was the weight shift from level flight. When you roll your body over like you're paragliding in the harness, it really, really goes more than my paramotor. But on that note, once you started doing more dynamic maneuvers, it felt like that weight shift response kind of went away. And I think that's because it doesn't have um, articulating swing arms, which allow you to roll just your legs instead of rolling the entire motor. When you have these fixed swing arms to weight shift, you have to move the entire frame when you have articulating swing arms, you can simply just move one leg over. Another thing I noticed in flight that was interesting was my climb rate was about half of the Scout, and I don't know if that's the frame or the particular engine I was flying, but definitely Tucker and I noticed that our climb rates were suffering for some reason. Once I landed, overall landing procedure, totally normal, no big deal at all. When it comes to would I choose this paramotor, um, I, I think the answer is no. Thank you to everyone for giving us the opportunity to fly it, and I uh, have come to the conclusion that this is not the paramotor for me. Personally, I value something that I find very easy to launch and handle on the ground and is, is not cumbersome, and I struggled a lot on the ground with this paramotor. I also found that the performance in flight was not what I was used to and didn't suit my needs. However, if you're looking for something that has some safety features that could help you in the event of a butt landing or an accident or otherwise, um, this paramotor is a good option. If you're looking for something extraordinarily durable, more than pretty much anything on the market, yeah, the Skytap is going to be amazing. If you're looking for a paramotor to put on the trike, I think that the Skytap is actually a really good option because when you're on the ground, you can sit in the seat fully and you're not in this kind of like folded down position like a lot of these other trikes that bolt a foot launch paramotor to wheels. It's a better option, honestly, for solo wheel launch trikes. I would say definitely it depends on the person who wants to fly this. If you're under kind of the 150 pound mark, I think you're gonna have a lot of trouble ground handling this. I know there's videos of people launching them just fine who are smaller 
but I just personally think that there are some better options on the market for somebody of my size or smaller in terms of parent motors. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you appreciated this video and found that I was trying to be as honest as possible because there was a lot of negativity surrounding our first video with the SkyTap Angel Frame. Until the next one, fly safe, fly good, don't suck. Peace.